Let's go back to Limestone County now for that breaking news. A guilty verdict in the Mason Sisk trial. It only took the jury a couple hours, as we said, to come and reach this verdict today. Sisk killing his father, stepmother, and three younger siblings. The baby only six months old. That occurred in their Elkmont home back in 2019. Matthew King joins us now. He's been in the courtroom since the very beginning of this trial, Monday a week ago. Matthew, what happened inside that courtroom when the verdict was read? Well, there were certainly many people who came in who weren't in the courtroom throughout the trial, but members of the sheriff's department, family, friends of the Sisk family, and many others, they came together to hear that verdict. But the first thing I noticed when they said the words guilty to the four counts of capital murder was just the face on Mason Sisk. He immediately just sighed and looked down to his feet as he had no other options there. There were also family members of Mary Sisk in the courtroom who were immediately swept to tears the second they heard the word guilty. And certainly all the lawyers involved had certain thoughts on it based on their cases they presented. Sis lawyers felt they presented a good enough case to be able to defend him. However, the prosecution's case ended up being the better case to the jurors. The, prose the prosecution really was pushing this confession that uh, Mike Blakely, who himself is serving time in jail, and he was put on the witness stand as well as the investigator, Johnny Morrell. There were questions about their tactics used, but apparently uh, the jury agreed with those tactics and agreed that confession was a good confession. Well, certainly, Liz, those tactics were a big selling point for the defense team's uh, case against the prosecution and how that that confession was forced out of Sisk. However, the thing that ultimately motivated them to make that decision was right there in the prosecution's closing argument. They argued it was enough to convince them to make that decision because Sisk's story that he told Blakely and Morrell, it lined up with all the details that prosecutors were able to prove, including where sheriff deputies found the gun, how Sisk would have done it and a possible motive that he provided to them when he told them he was fed up with his parents fighting all the time. This was two weeks of trial, Matthew, and I was quite surprised that def the defense team brought no witnesses to the stand. What was your take in the courtroom on that aspect? Well, certainly they were trying to have their own witness admitted into official testimony, a psychology professor talking about false and forced confessions. However, Judge Wise ruled that would not be the case for jurors to hear. And it sounds like Mason Sisk himself did not want to testify as he had the right not to. They found that they had just laid enough holes in the prosecution's case to be able to rest their own case without calling any witnesses. However, ultimately, that's not what jurors decided to agree with there. Matthew, he was convicted as an adult, but he will not serve time as an adult because he was 14 at the time of these murders. How is all that playing into his sentencing? Well, certainly, Liz, normally when you get a capital murder case like this of this magnitude and you're trying someone for an adult, the death penalty would be on the table. However, because Mason Sisk was a child when this happened, the death penalty is not on the table. We're actually going to talk to District Attorney Brian Jones shortly after here to get a better idea of what he and his team are thinking along with the defense attorneys for that sentencing hearing. That is going to be a separate sentencing, so we'll continue to keep you up to date on that as it goes. Reporting live in Limestone County, Matthew King, 48 on your side.